So I'm Pankaj Gupta, working as a principal uh, engineer in NXP Security Technical Group. I'm here to talk about the coupling of kernel keying with Linux Crypto Framework and how this coupling will enhance the robustness of crypto operations performed by LCF. LCF uh, is Linux Crypto Framework uh, that, that I will be using uh, in, in the slides going forward. This session will be uh, divided uh, in four sections, uh, understanding the security requirements, security, implementing uh, implementation gaps in current Linux, uh, brief about kernel hearings and kernel Linux crypto framework, and finally the coupling else, uh, between Linux crypto framework and hearing. During the session, I will brief you about security requirement in context of IoT device and IoT edge, highlighting the implementation gaps. Uh, brief about kernel keying and uh, how this coupling will enhance the robustness of Linux crypto framework. By end of this session, uh, the attendees will be able to appreciate the motivation behind the proposed coupling. To better understand the special needs of IoT security, I've compared uh, to the need of IoT security with IoT, IoT security. Not only uh, IoT devices are not only connected to physical world, most of the time exposed to the hostile environment. Significant, uh, significant uh, variety of IoT devices exist and make their, uh, and because of the variety, there's a secu um, this, their security requirement get multitude. Real-time system requirements could not afford classic IT solutions of using antivirus. Not, they are not always under the supervision of humans and security concerns in, in the IoT device and the data they generate needs best security practices. They have longer expected lifetime than IT assets. And these security practices need to be maintained throughout the complete device life cycle. Security is now the industry top priority. IoT industry is committed to it and trying to bridge the gap lag behind the rate of digital transformation, the speed of securing the ecosystem. One such, one such effort, one such effort uh, is by ARM, uh, where ARM standardized the platform security architecture to address the shortcomings in IoT security. It holds a great potential in unifying the entire IoT value chain into a sing singular holistic approach to security, it gaining traction nowadays. So, so let's start with the basic principle of IoT device. To, uh, there are three types of cryptographic keys that are being dealt here, could be used throughout the device lifecycle, from device provisioning to end of life. With each of these uh, keys, few additional key attributes are associated to restrict the usage of key to prevent wider security impact. For instance, like service keys, Keys used to encrypt the data collected by the IoT device from a particular uh, service sensor, communicate it over cloud to be stored in users' database. IoT device only has to collect and encrypt the data, as you can see in the right side. There is a key attributes mentioned. So the usage is encryption only, for instance, for one example. Then there is a network keys, keys that are used to encrypt the data to be shared using the network of IoT device to prevent the eavesdropping within the IoT network. For instance, IoT device shared data to the IoT hub, not establishing the session created using the network key to prevent eavesdrop, eavesdropping. Then there is a third type of uh, operation being performed that's device software integrity using the software validation keys. These keys are fused into the IoT devices some in some of the cases and only to allow the authentic, uh, this will help us to allow running the authenticated software on the IoT device. By validating the image, for instance, validating the image signing certificate followed by image, uh, validating the image certificate before loading the image onto the device. So in, in the, so you can see in the right side, there's each of these keys have, uh, I've tried to say the key attributes to it, like uh, the usage would be sign only or decrypt only in the software key, the network keys would be 
for encryption because the data from the IoT no node to IoT Hub will be encrypted data only. Uh, then there is a service key when uh, where the uh, the service data will be encrypted and uh, only be decrypted by the uh, IoT service or the end user database. Let's got a little deep dive into the individual operations. Network inclusion. The security uh, network keys uh, being generated are the volatile key uh, during the session of sharing the key, uh, sharing the data from the IoT device to the IoT uh, no, hub. Uh, the type of the key attribute would be uh, most suited would be encryption only to the IoT node and for the decryption only to the IoT hub because it is decrypting the data received from the IoT uh, device. For instance, device configuration uh, operations in which the remote enrollment and configurations being done, uh, the, the typical keys, uh, the keys or the key IDs will be fused in the fuses of the IoT device. Before, uh, like before sharing the diagnostic data of the device, uh, and the, uh, the device security state will be validated. Device uh, software integrity, uh, for instance, where we are validating the secure boot, whether the uh, security state uh, must be checked before doing any crypto operations on this device. Oh, uh, before receiving the, uh, like uh, getting the OT upgrades and uh, validating the uh, OT upgrades against the fused keys, using the fused keys, uh, runtime integrity checkers. There are many, many operations which IoT device do using the keys and the additional key attributes helps them to identify, to, to, to narrow down the crypto operation being done there. Secure channel connections, the TLS handshake, where the persistence key is part of the certificate, volatile key part of the record layers being generated and used. Device authentication registration. Uh, in the device authentication, the fuse and the permit keys will be used for this purpose. The device lifecycle state. If the device lifecycle state is closed, then you can't uh, refuse or you, you can't go ahead with certain operations. The role of cryptography in the IoT device is uh, same. The, uh, the same four pillars of any cryptography is the confidential to maintain the confidentiality, of authenticity, integrity, and non-repetition. Keeping the secrets uh, within the uh, trusted entities from the IoT node till the IoT server. Verifying the entities for the source of data before the providing the software, validated software to the valid IoT device, if ensuring the data transport, pre preventing from the eavesdropping, safe software executions, before uh, validating the security state of the IoT device before executing the software. As identifying the device uniquely uh, among the IoT network. That's these are the one of the uh, uh, cases where overproductions can be curbed down having the unique device identification. IoT devices that is running on Linux uses Linux subsystems for one or the other cases. These kernel features like KTLS, IMA, EVM, DMK feeds two inputs to uh, two inputs, key buffer and plain text or the input data to Linux crypto frame. This, what I say as a loose coupling between subsystem and the crypto framework, that impacts the robustness. To achieve these, to achieve the additional robustness, need to map the keys on different areas depending on the lifetime and the sensitivity. Sensitivity of the operation, uh, we have to map before doing the operation. The, to, to accomplish that, the additional key attributes being provided to the key so that when Linux crypto operation, li, sorry, sorry, the Linux crypto framework performs any crypto operations, it 
also validate the sensitivity of the keys before doing any crypto operation. That's what I'm trying to put here. Let's take an example of TLS handshake for, for an IoT device. It's one of the typical example highlighting the key attributes in play. Session keys, lifetime is volatile. T master keys are volatile. Device private keys, a persistent keys fuse in the fuse. Server public a persistent keys fuse in the fuses of the device. Server public key are persistent keys fused in the fuse of the device. Session keys are key usage. Encrypt only for service data to the server. When the when the client is sending server, uh, data, it will be encrypt only uh, to the server. Uh, and when uh, when this operation is performed by the line, uh, by by the IoT node, and when it received at the kernel uh, received at the server, it it can be encrypt decrypt on. The key attributes can be both. Here I try to highlight the gap in the current implementation. LCF gets following two, two op, key, key buffer and key length and data to do any crypto op. This is the existing uh, Linux crypto framework where when we provide a plain text or the encrypted text along with the key, we got as an output encrypted text or decrypted text. But the gap in current implementation is crypto operations are not constrained to the intended sensitivity level of the key. For instance, if we provide uh, some key attributes along with the plain text or encrypted text, the output will be could be encrypted text or decrypted text, or it could be none. So LCF can may not give any output depending on the sensitivity of the key. If it is the sensitivity of the key meet the criteria of crypto operation, that output will come. For instance, let's take an example of key usage. If there is an encrypted text key and the key attribute, which says encrypt only, then the op output would be none because the text is encrypted only. If the data is plain text, then only the encrypted output will come. Similarly, if we have an encrypted uh, permitted algo as AACBC only, if the, if the operation is asked for ECB, there will be no output. But if it will be CBC, the output will be there. So, so, so what I'm trying to achieve here is that Linux crypto framework, we need to add, we need to feed to Linux crypto framework the additional key attributes, which constrained the Linux crypto framework operate crypto operations to the sensitivity of key. Kernel keyring is a Linux subsystem for key management. Various kernel components used to retain or cache their keys like trusted key, authentication keys, or encryption keys, and other data keys in this. So I'm taking an example of trusted keyring here, where we have a key payloads in the in that keyring. And what I am proposing here that this key payload we have currently we have key buffer, sorry, we have key buffer and key blob. I'm proposing to have another attribute, uh, another member as a key attribute list, which stores the key at additional key attributes like it can be it not limiting to these, it can be more, but like key usage, key permitted algo, key lifetime, key wrap PID, or key device state. In existing implementation, there is no way Linux subsystem like DM crypto, DM crypt can either fetch 
the key sensitive additional key attributes or send them to a Linus Victor framework. As you can see, in the existing framework, we can deencrypt, can propose the algo name, the key buffer, key length, and the plain text to the Linus Victor framework. While what I'm proposing here, what we need is the key usage, the, the additional key attribute, which, uh, which constrains the uh, Linux crypto framework for doing any crypto operations that is missing currently. Next slide, I will show you a proposed solution to share this key additional attributes to a Linux crypto framework. Here, taking an example of SK Cypher only, though it can extend to other crypto ops as well. As part of crypto allox SK Cypher, called by kernel subsystems, like like ktls or dm crypto where we are as we are uh, calling the crypto tfm we are uh, structure for crypto tfm got allocated as part of this structure proposes uh, proposal is to add two members one for ident identifying the key type is it the is the key as of key uh, trusted key logon key or any user defined key other other one member is key payload the reference to the key payload where the point reference to the key payload will be stored before passing it to lanis crypto frame so for instance this there is a this is the key uh, there is a uh, list there is a trusted key ring where the key payload is there uh, as part of the key payload structure like let here is the example of trusted key payload is being taken where i'm proposing to add another static array for storing the attributes and while the kernel component like dmcrypt or any other kernel management layer fetch the key payload set the key type based on the key ring set the reference of the key payload to this before passing it to Linux crypto framework. That's what I'm proposing as a Linux, uh, as, a, as a coupling between Linux uh, crypto framework and kernel keying for fetching key attributes. Let me take an example of dmcrypt in the next slide. Here, in the user space, when user gives algo name with the dm setup command along with the key ring name as well as the key name, dmcrypt first search for the key from the key ring. The key payload being searched and fetched and stored in the local structure of dmcrypt. Then the algo uh, on uh, working on the algo name, the Linux crypto it, DM, uh, dmcrypt calls the crypto allox sk cipher command for, and I'll get that crypto tfm allocated as part of this call. The fetched key payload and the key type are being set by the dmcrypt in this structure. After this population of crypto TFM, dmcrypt call SK cipher set key, where the crypto TFM key and key length had been passed. In this, you can see, I have taken an example of I've taken an example of NXP hardware IP called CAM. It's a hardware accelerator for crypto operations. 
As part of the key loading, the additional key attributes are stored by CAM in key payload of the trusted key ring. So when the key CTL command is being used to load the key from the key block in the key, key ring, CAM puts the CAM specific attribute structure and populate the values to it. As you can see. And when as part of set key, SK cipher set key, when this function get offloaded to CAM, Linux for performing the Linux crypto crypto operation, CAM fetches the key attributes which were populated by CAM itself during loading of the key in the key ring. CAM fetches that key attributes from the key payload part of the crypto TFM and enforce the conditional crypto operation. This way we can achieve the tight coupling, which is uh, a necessity for IoT devices. IoT devices, so I'm, I'm coming to the, I'm here, I'm coming to the concluding points. Enhancing the robustness of Linux crypto framework based on key attribute means making the system security more robust. Increased security robustness makes it more compelling for LCF keyring that stores key attribute. That's my, that's my proposed and my RFC patch is also ready. Uh, I would be uh, putting up this patch in coming days. Looking forward for the comments from the community. Thanks, I'm open to questions. So this is David Howells. So I own the keyring stuff. Uh, would it be helpful? Yeah. Would it be helpful Sorry. if I added a new, an additional add key system call that allowed you to pass attributes, as well as a payload, so they pass them separately, and uh, a key cuddle to read attributes from the key from a key. So what I understood from you is that you, if you add a key, uh, key CTL, uh, an option in key CTL to uh, list the attributes. Uh, and mm -hmm. a, a new yeah. add key system called that, that could take an extra parameter that's a list of attributes. Would mm -hmm. that be useful right. for this? Yes, uh, it, in, a, in a sense, yes, it will be useful to it. But what I uh, propose uh, as part of this uh, slide, if, you, if, I, if I go back here, when the, uh, this, these attributes uh, being, part, being generated are being populated by the blob. So what I also look for the integrity of this, uh, these attributes. So if, if the last uh, time when the blob, uh, this key was generated and packed as part of blob, that is the, the, the integrity is within it. So only nobody else or no unauthorized user can uh, change the attributes which are freeze to this blob. So when key CTL is loading this blob, these attributes being populated by the, by the driver which generated that blob. So the integrity of those attributes are there so, intact. So, so Pankaj, what you're suggesting is that the key CTL uh, call itself is, uh, is sufficient right now for uh, passing the attributes, right? So I think David is saying that if, uh, I mean, if there is something that, uh, something additional that can be added to add, uh, to the add key system call, would it be required? So maybe I think David, we need to think about that uh, we did not consider uh, 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 
uh, that particular uh, that that particular point because uh, so basically what whatever testing we uh, we have been doing is with the key ctl and there are uh, and I, I believe there are there is a mechanism to pass the attributes uh, along with that uh, but uh, yeah, so if uh, if your proposal of adding a new system call, uh, we'll need to think as to uh, what all can be achieved uh, with that. And what we, I mean, if something, if there is something that we can't still do with key CTL uh, the way it is. Okay. But yeah, we, we can think about it. Uh, another comment. Uh... On your crypto TFM structure, is that actually safe? What you've done there, you you, sh you should probably pin the key as well. Otherwise, you're uh, you've got a point to the payload that might the payload may disappear under you. That, payload that's, might uh, disappear. Be, be deallocated, you, unless you're pinning it in some way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's just a technical thing. Yeah. So I think uh, Pankaj is going to uh, post the patch and uh, maybe can have a, uh, we can review it on the mailing list and see if uh, there are issues there. Okay. Yep. I think we're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.